Um, I'm very glad to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's not my first time in Estonia. In fact, uh, I've been here many times. Uh, and uh, it's uh, the first time was 15 years ago when Estonia still looked a bit different. Uh, my first visits uh, were to Tuhala, where my grandfather's family lived uh, some time ago, so there are some family connections, but also to Hiuma, to the island of Hiuma, because I myself uh, come from something we call the disadvantaged region in Germany, Friesland. It's a small island in the North Sea, and uh, that is perhaps also part of the challenge we are facing, which are the regions in Europe which are advantaged and which are disadvantaged. It's especially a problem for rural areas. Um, I also had uh, for a long time and still uh, very close contact with the movement in Estonia, which is the Kodukant rural movement. Um, I, I've been working uh, with a European network called PREPARE, Pre-Accession Partnership for Rural Europe. And the idea of this civil society network was to support each other in order to develop rural areas in a way that they can live a sustainable life. So that is my background, my connection to Estonia. So that's why I'm very happy to be here again. I'm supposed to talk about the CAP its history, uh, its background, its philosophy, its objectives, but also about the challenge of reforming the CAP. And you know we are just in the process of reforming the CAP again. We have had two main attempts to reform the CAP because people were getting unhappy about its results and I suppose you also are quite unhappy about some results of this common policy. And uh, I'm also supposed to link a bit um, uh, our theme today to what is possible uh, in order to achieve what the minister just has said, uh, moving towards mainstream sustainable development, and he specifically mentioned organic farming. I would like to start to give a short talk about uh, the history. It's interesting to, to see that in the media agriculture is not really a very sexy um, issue. When I just had a meeting with journalists in Berlin, um, they said, well, if you want to talk about agriculture, uh, don't mention the European agriculture policy because that is very boring for us. It's complicating, nobody really understands how it works and everybody is unhappy because too much money goes into agriculture and what comes out of it is not really something people want. It's not really healthy food, it's a move towards industrial farming which produces a lot of scandals, uh, it is something which people don't understand because it's taxpayers money that is invested there. So give us some interesting thing about agriculture. And I said, well, we had um, comments from Tony Blair thinking that agriculture is over. Europe should move into something more modern. And we should import our food and our products from somewhere else because that would help developing countries to develop. So let's abandon agriculture, or at least let's abandon a policy which is giving subsidies. Let's liberalize trade in agricultural products. That is the British position still. And in some other countries, that's also um, the idea that open markets, which would help developing countries to get a better share in wealth of the world, and it would get, we would get rid of um, uh, uh, money that goes into the wrong direction. Well, I think what, um, what the history has shown, the history of the common agriculture policy, was first of all, it was an idea of getting independent. After the Second World War, 
The idea was getting self-sufficient. The idea was supporting farmers in getting more productive. And it was quite successful. Already in the 70s, we were in most of par parts of our um, uh, agriculture, we were self-sufficient. We got beyond that. And you might think that all the surplus production we had in Europe was based on our own production. But it's not true. We are, in the world, the biggest importer of agriculture products. We are importing uh, animal feed. We are importing most of protein crops on which then our very industrialized farming is based. So all the milk surplus production, all the surplus production in meat we are exporting then with subsidies is based on imports and increasingly on imports of soybeans which are on top of that genetically modified. So it's a very uh, unstable situation. We are depending on imports and we are exporting with taxpayers' money our surplus production which is based on these imports. Uh, so that is one of the key problems. We ha don't have a balanced production of our food. We invest a lot into animal feed, which then is transformed into protein, animal protein. And then uh, we, we, we find uh, ourselves uh, in a situation where lots of negative impacts uh, are seen on the environment. You know, in very industrialized uh, farming uh, has negative impacts on uh, soils, it has negative impacts on water. You know all about that. And th that has been, of course, criticized uh, in the past years, and uh, that has been uh, the subject of subsequent reforms. In 1992, for the first time, it was recognized that this is a problem and that we should start with a more environmentally friendly production. That was the beginning of the so-called agro-environmental measures. But that was seen as something marginal still. That was seen as something additional, an annex to agriculture policy. That was the beginning of a rural development policy with, which was seen to, to compensate the negative side effects of that industrial agriculture model. So farmers were paid for shifting to organic farming as an exception from the rule. The rule was still produce more, raise productivity, grow or perish. 250,000 farmers per year have left agriculture, mainly small farmers, mainly family farms. This process continues. We are losing farmers. We are losing diversity of farming practices. We are losing the potential of having a very diverse approach to our food production. And that means we are not only losing biodiversity in wild spaces, we are also losing biodiversity within the agriculture farming sector. Why? Because farmers have been pushed to use only the most highly yielding varieties of crops and the most highly yielding races of animals. So there is a, another aspect of unbalanced uh, development and a high risk of losing more and more the very basis of farming, which is also biodiversity within the agricultural system. Again, the Commission and the European Agriculture Policy has reacted to that and has said, okay, let's pay farmers for doing some kind of biodiversity conservation, but not in the production, uh, at the rim of the fields, at parts of uh, uh, um, uh, rural areas which are considered anyways to be not very productive. So this separation between high productivity and high production and increase of production in order to be competitive on the world market and on the other hand protection of the environment is still part of this agriculture policy and this is a big problem if you look on organic farming the minister was right there is a trend towards mainstreaming i remember when i started 25 years ago 
in the Agriculture Committee, when somebody was just mentioning the concept of organic farming, this was just a joke. Everybody was laughing about it because they would say, well, how will you feed the world with organic farming? You need a chemical uh, uh, input, you need pesticides, you need all that. We have to increase production. That was still in a time when we had a load of overproduction, surplus production, which nobody would buy. Still people were thinking, well, we need to increase productivity. We will feed the world. We will export all our products to the uh, developing countries in order to feed them. Well, don't believe that is over. In the new proposals, which Mr. Barroso has said for the next 10 years of the development of the European Union, it is said we need green growth. We need growth. We need green growth. But what is green growth? When you look at the concept, it's mainly, in the, again, a technical fix. It's using a, a technology, including GMOs, in order to increase productivity. But, of course, with a green shape, with more aspects of fixing all the problems, which is biodiversity loss and so on. But it's still a vision of growing and not a vision of balancing and not a vision of integrating what I just mentioned as negative side effect into the production. So I think that the, the philosophy should be different. We should say we should shift rule and exception. If at the moment organic farming and other sustainable systems are the exception, they should become the rule. That makes agriculture policy completely different.